Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to go over the newsworthy announcements over the last week in the world of Zoho. I'm Drew Brockbank. I'm a Zoho consultant and a Zoho partner. And with that, let's jump right into the news. Alrighty. So as you can see here, I am inside of the new announcement for Early Access 2024 for unveiling the new feature, Cadences Studio. Now, this is a really exciting announcement. I'm going to skip over to this image because I think it explains perfectly what this feature is going to allow you to do. So essentially what you can do with Cadence Studio is build out what you want a representative to do for follow-up as soon as a lead is sales ready. So I'm going to jump over here to the CRM to give you a little demo of how this would actually look for you. So inside of your leads module, it essentially represents all the unqualified opportunities you have to do business with somebody. So let's say someone fills out a form and it says contact us and you go right to sales ready as a lead. Well, if I'm a rep and I'm seeing all my sales ready leads, the question now becomes, what do I actually do about it? And so in Cadence's studio, you can say, hey, well, the first follow-up is send an email. The second is if they've replied, thank the customer for feedback. And then if they've completed, um, if you completed the previous task, then you can define what the next parts of the cadence is, the cadence is going to be for the specific situation for the lead. And in other words, it essentially represents what you're willing to do to go after a lead because at some point you're going to abandon your efforts for going at a lead um, from the sales perspective and you're going to toss it back over to marketing, right? And that's actually what this stage here represents, right? Recycle. If you've already done everything that you can on the sales front to reach out to a lead, then what you do is you push it over to Recycled and then it hands it back to automated communications. That's Cadence's studio, really neat feature here, essentially allows you to line up all the follow-ups in whatever order you would like. Because what I used to do with my clients is I'd pull up a, um, a sheet with them and I would say, okay, so for day one, what do we wanna do for outreach as soon as you get a lead? And then day two and the day three, do you wanna send out an email and then a LinkedIn notification and then give them a call? And so that's the discussion really to have here for cadences is what do you do after a lead is sales ready? All right, so some key highlights for Cadences Studio. You've got automated sequential follow-ups, which we talked a little bit about. You've got intelligent automation. So based on where someone is at in their follow-up sequence, if they've responded to an email, you can decide what you want to do with that. If you want to rip them out of the cadence after they responded to an email, you can certainly do that. And you've got some advanced, robust analytics here to determine, okay, so based on this follow-up, um, who answered, or it was it unanswered or scheduled? You can see the different stats based on your cadences, configuration and utilization, target audience selection, first follow-up configuration, responsive follow-up configuration, and more. So lots here inside of Cadence's studio. Now, if you want to learn more, there are two webinars that they are doing. So you can register for the two webinars that they're doing on Tuesday, February 6, 2024. And if you want to request early access like I have, you can do that right here. Request for early access in the announcement. All right, so the next announcement here, and this is probably the most impactful one, and I talked about this last week as well, is changes in email sender policies. So effective February 1st, 2024, Google is implementing some new policies. And essentially, if you are not on a custom domain and you don't have it verified and authenticated, then you may be in trouble here for actually getting your emails sent and delivered. So again, you can avoid most of this by making sure that you are on a custom domain that it's authenticated and verified, and then you should not be stopped from sending emails from your system. All right, so uh, next thing on the list here is what's new in Zoho Analytics for January. Now, if you're using HyperSQL and you have a local file that you want to have as a data source inside of Zoho Analytics, then you are in love. You are in luck with Live Connect. And so now HyperSQL has a connection inside of Zoho Analytics, which is really, really nice. And so you can have real-time analysis for HyperSQL databases. Now you have different updates in dashboards, and this is actually pretty cool. So inside of Zoho Analytics, where you would previously drag a report onto the dashboard, and then you'd have to add a user filter. And then if you added another report, you'd have to connect it to the user filter. These things are now done automatically. So as you drag reports over, if they already had a user filter, it'll just be added to the top. And then subsequent 
reports with the same user filter will just connect to the one that you've already added. You'll see that right here. So that is super nice. We've got an update for charts dependent field movement. So recent update where previously you're restricted on moving dependent columns while creating reports. Now you can freely reorder and rearrange them, which is nice. Okay, so this open AI one is actually really cool. So with the uh, with ChatGPT and OpenAI releasing ChatGPT, Zia used to be pretty much useless. And Zia is Zoho's AI. And it's touted as being super, super helpful. But honestly, I built over 100 different Zoho instances and no one really used Zia. It's like, it's like when you buy an Oculus and you use it once, it's super cool. And then you like never use it again. It just gathers dust and it's just something you don't use very often. That's kind of how I thought of Zia. But ChatGPT gives you a lot more uh, good use cases for using AI in your day-to-day -day usage of these systems. So what's cool is Zia backends to OpenAI, ChatGPT, right? And so you can prompt Zia to make you a formula and it will make a formula for you. So the cool thing is now OpenAI has access to your data model so it can actually see the different tables that you're using. Um, that way it spits out better outputs for you because it has context to what your system is all about and the data that's in your system. And you got Shopify marketplace update. So you can import and blend Google ads and YouTube ads data with Shopify. So if you're a Shopify user, you're in luck. You get a better idea of which of your marketing efforts is actually driving revenue. So that's really nice as well. Customize character styles in Zoho Writer. If you're a Zoho Writer power user, then you are in luck. I'm not a cheat on Zoho Writer with Google Docs every single day. I mean, look at this. You can just do doc.new and then open, this, open a new document. I mean, I am just super spoiled, but that is just so cool to me, so I can't leave it. All right, so in Zoho Writer, and I'm just kidding, I do I do use Zoho Writer. I use it for proposal generation and for mail merge templates, but if I have to quickly take a note, you know I'm going over to Google Docs. All righty, what's cool about this is, and you probably already knew this, you could grab a piece of text and then you could um, update it as a style, as a custom style. Well, now what you can do is if you update the style, then it will apply to all the other parts of the document. So you'll see that this is purple. And once you update to orange, boom, everything else is updated to orange as well. So this is cool. And Zoho Writer for you. Dashboard drill down. Okay, so previously inside of Zoho Biggin, you'd have to, and look, I'm not, I'm not advocating for Biggin. Zoho CRM is so much better than Biggin. If you are using Biggin, you should let me know why, because just because it's simpler, doesn't mean you shouldn't use Zoho CRM, right? Because if you use Zoho CRM in a simple manner, which you totally can, you don't have to use all the features and the UX and UI, it's not like that much worse from Zoho CRM to Biggin. Biggin is simpler, but you can grow into all the other capabilities that Zoho CRM has to offer over time. So I don't know why you would go over to what's essentially a poor man's CRM when you can use the real deal Zoho CRM. But with that, this is still a cool update. So if you are a Biggin user, you can click into a dashboard, you can see the detailed information, and then you can see the detailed list view. So this is pretty cool. In the detailed list view, you can actually view the record that it's referencing in the list view. That's cool because when I build reports like this for Zoho CRM and like Zoho Analytics, I actually have to concatenate the base URL with the ID. That way someone can go open a new tab and get to the record. So to see it all in one view and not even have to leave the page that is a really neat update so this is this is pretty cool for big end users now cpq rules are now supported for custom subforms and custom modules in zoho crm this is huge so cpq functionality is somewhat new to zoho crm they buffed it up over the last year what's so cool now is this is available for custom subforms and custom modules in zoho crm and all inventory based modules so essentially they have taken CPQ, it's done really, really well, and they are expanding it across the system in Zoho CRM so that you can take advantage of CPQ functionality. Now, if you're not aware of what CPQ functionality is even to begin with, it's essentially your way of automating line items being suggested and added, and then making modifications to the line items as the criteria of the quote changes. So it's just a way of, and especially if you have like a dynamic pricing structure, right? So some complicated, pricing structures. It allows you to automate a lot of that. That way your reps don't have to memorize everything. And the system does a lot of the legwork and a lot of the thinking for you. So again, if you have a dynamic pricing structure and if you have a lot of different products, then this is something that you are going to love. So we love that CPQ is now supported for custom subforms and custom modules in Zoho CRM. All right, so if you use Zoho Backstage to collect 
collect uh, private health information, then you can now use HIPAA compliance um, encryption for those fields. So you'll see blood group here. And what's super cool is you can just go to the side and then you can select field value includes EPI, EPHI, electronic private health information. And this will encrypt that for you. So for those of you who are gathering private health information in a registration form in Zoho Backstage, I don't know how many of you are doing that, but if you are, that is now an available feature for you that was announced three days ago. Cool. All right, last thing here, we've got a update for multiple currency support in Zoho CRM. Whereas previously you had to be, I think it was a super admin in order to modify the currencies. So if you were selling in the US and Canada, you had to add the Canadian dollar. Um, Multi-currency management was only available to, I believe it was just the super admin. Now it's available to anyone that you make it available to through permissions inside of the profile section in Zoho CRM. So we love this because sometimes it's really frustrating. You're the owner of the business, you're the super admin, but you don't wanna deal with the day-to-day -day customization and configuration of the system. So now you can allow other users to manage the currencies within Zoho CRM. And the nice thing too, is it gives you an audit trail so you can see if anyone else has been messing with it. So cool update there for multiple currency management inside of Zoho CRM. All right, everyone, you know that Zoho is hard to use. There's a lot going on in it. And what's really tough is to get your whole team trained up to use Zoho in the best way possible. Because even if you get your Zoho system set up in the best way, it's all for nothing if your users don't know how to use it because they're not going to rise to the capabilities of Zoho. They're gonna to fall to the level of their training. And that's why I've created Z Training. It's free. And I basically boiled down what I think is helpful for someone to become a power user of Zoho. That way they can get ramped up quickly in just five days. So go ahead and check out Z Training. It's free. It's got my SOPs. It's got templates in there and you can reference it as needed. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.